Maybe you need a couple more people under that car. What do you want? I don't work on Fords. Oh, it's just a Mustang. This generation. Alex, what year is this car? 07. When, when did they stop making this? Like when they changed generations? 12 or something? Okay. Okay, so I'll figure up to 2010. We're doing a full reseal on the diff. So these axle seals, this one's seeping. The pinion seal was leaking kind of in an abnormal way. It wasn't running a lot out here, but it filled this whole uh, flange with all kinds of goop. There was a bunch of junk coming out. So when we pulled the drive shaft, it was all full of crap. I'll show you. So right here, pulled the drive shaft and this, this is all gooped up in here. We bagged it to keep it clean, but uh, that, that part of the drive shaft is all full of this goop. So we know that pinion seals leak in. And so to drain the fluid, we had to pull the cover. We're in a gasket, prep the cover, scrape it with a putty knife or carefully with a razor blade, and then we'll clean it all up. And then we're gonna, we already pulled this axle seal to match it up. We initially got the incorrect axle seal. So here's the new one. It's two different sizes apparently. Um, so I'm gonna show you how to pull the axle seal, drive the axle seal in, and then when we get the axles back in, I'll show you how we got the axles out. Kind of in a reverse order. We had to get this thing rolling so we get it done on time. So here's the seal. Let's match it up like this. Make sure it'll be right. And it is. And then we have to inspect that sealing surface. That shiny surface right there for scores or, you know, nicks. And it looks relatively clean. It just looks like axle seal failure over time. So the axle seal rides here. The bearing rides here. Uh, so actually, it doesn't have a little there's a little area that we need to clean up right there tough to get it to focus on that so right there that needs a little love so we're gonna kind of polish that up that's where the lip of the seal is gonna seal and that is not clean enough it looks like it's mostly just goop but if you feel anything with your fingernail um, that would be enough damage to make the new seal leak um, but that one's just going to be cleaned up, I think. You keep on scraping that gasket material above. Oh, yeah. We're just looking for sure this center section of the differential's been apart. There's little uh, little pry marks here and there, like right there. Oh, uh, over here. And the... Not that big of a deal. It's just we know it's been worked on before. And then we got Adrian over here cleaning this backing plate from that leaking axle seal. This is the one that was leaking the worst. Gotta get it all cleaned up. Uh, I'm gonna do the pinion seal because we can mess some stuff up on that. So the job we're doing really was because of the clutch. So we got the transmission out, we're doing the prep. When you go to do this, talk with me because you gotta put the right lube in the right spots. So we're really trying to do the clutch, but um, being that we had it apart and we saw these issues, we put a different team on the back to fix the, reseal the diff. We're going to get it all, all freshened up. So obviously we pulled the brakes and stuff off. This video won't be how to pull the brakes off. We're just going to focus on how to get the axles out, get the axle seals out, get the new seals in, prep the axles, get them clean, reseal the cover, and then we're going to do the pinion seal, which is going to be a little bit more tricky. Well, I just prepped for the rear main. Got the new seal in there and just grease the lip. I'm handing it to you. Don't touch the FIPG. Okay. You're more than welcome to touch the seal. It's no big deal. It's just got a grease on it. Okay. You're going to slide it real nice and gently over the crankshaft. So up and over? Yeah, you kind of bring it like straight in, but try not to wipe the RTV off at the oil pan. And then you'll kind of twist it. That way it slides on the crank real easy. Straighter. Straighter, straighter, straighter. Uh, bring it up. That'd be good. You'll be alright. Like I got more grip on this. Come on, it's alright. It's alright. You got it, man. Who's got the bolties? I do. Uh, now work the crank work the seal in the crankshaft. See that? Look right here. Oh. Don't roll it over. You gotta kind of work it in. This takes some finesse, baby. There you go. Nice. Okay. Now it feels like it's not on a dowel or something. See how it feels a little crooked? 
get it get it fit oh. on there. There's that dowel yeah. and that dowel. Is that it? It feels a little funny. This feels a little weird. Or make sure you good. Get all the bolts started. Here's the bolts. The bolts. Jerry's got the bolts. Got the bolts, Jerry. 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 Now you got FIPG goop all over. Uh, yeah, just make sure all those bolts are going to land. And then as soon as we got all the bolts started, we'll, we'll draw it up nice and smooth. Nice and even. Continuing. Man, you're going to hate so dirty. Those hands going to be so... You're, not, you're going to have those man hands. The gloves were... Now, did you get a pilot crazy. bearing? Yeah. Okay, so we got to pull that out. I'm going to get a puller. Yeah. All right, so check it out. Here's our pilot bearing. Here's a new pilot bearing. It's a literal roller bearing, not a bushing. So we got to pull that one out. The pull method, there's a lot of different ways. We could use the bean bowl bread. I even heard about toilet paper just right now. <laughs> but this is a puller. This one might be a little tough, actually. They make a lot of different pullers. This one won't quite get narrow enough. So I'm just going to try to use one end of it as like a slide hammer. And if this doesn't work, which it doesn't feel like it's going to work, I'm going to have to get a new method. The one I wanted to use is locked up and I don't have a key to it. Let's go dirt bag. Ooh, you, this is going to suck. It can be a pain. It needed me. Obviously, we don't reuse this, so we'll ruin it by the time I get it out. Okay, Liam, you pause. All right, if this yep. one fits, ooh, this one might not quite fit. We might have to bust this bearing out in pieces to get this one out. <laughs> Ready? I'm just going to bust it apart. I'm going to pop this one in. I'm trying to go in right now. Pilot, thank you. Because yeah. i gotta, I got to catch the lip. But this is a stronger slide hammer. So if I could catch the lip, we'll be able to get it out. And we'll clean all this debris and junk out after. Okay, ready? Hey. Nobody get hit by this thing. And then I'm going to feel good. And we're sitting here and guys. Oh, Alright, <laughs> but the thing is, who's got that new bearing? So right there. This is still the the part of the bearing, I think. And don't they? Right there. So you yeah. just knocked out the inner race? <laughs> Pretty much. So we gotta keep going. Oh, yeah. I mean, this one's oh, gonna be fun, dude. Right? Oh, I see. It's, like it's for that Ford Power, man. Ooh, this one's gonna suck. Good job, baby. If you say so. Okay. Why does it have so much free? Is it that more amount? Uh, no, it's just because normally it'd be supported by the transmission with the transmission mount. Ooh. But I might actually have to use a different um, puller now that we got the guts out of it. Because I got to catch that lip in there. Yeah. A lot of people skip this step. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I wonder why. Okay, let me see here. Let me see over here and over here. That's a small lip. I'm going to go and consider our options if this doesn't grab it right now. This actually has like a... Uh, oh, you really get this thing? You say so. A little lip. A little open. Open. Dropping pieces out of it. Slide it in. 8 mil. And we'll leave it to the tiny point. It's not really catching a good edge on that. We might end up drawing it out. Or if I can bring a hammer. What? There should be one. Hama hama hama. There should be for sure. For sure. Hammer? Yeah. Too late. If I can get it to just barely touch on the side. Not hit the crank. Hold it. I don't think I got it good now. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, I'm going to get some different tools. Pause that again. Pause. Yeah. Tool in there. The more I crank this, the more outward these ears are going to squeeze. And you got them right in the little grooves. You hold it. Mm -hmm. Here we 
every day these kids are like do miracles. Let's do miracles every day. You don't have the special tools, just freaking make it work. Special tool. Otherwise, you need the real teacher, man. Can't be a teacher if you can't freaking do everything all the time. Okay. So there's your tool. I was trying to make something that catches right here and right here. That's why they have those little grooves in there. It's to. It's obviously for a Ford special service tool. Pause, we're getting ready to drive the new one in. Ready? You got it sideways or up and down? Up and down. Sideways better? Yeah. Try it. Ready? Yeah. Alright, so we got the uh, the driver here. I'm gonna switch it over. It's the freaking gravy driver. Get rid of that one. Simone. Put this one in. I think this will fit in the bearing. Ooh, you know what? This one won't work because the nut's gonna hit. That's all right, we'll do it without it. I'm gonna keep it right there. So this driver right here, you'll notice it's gonna support the pilot bearing on the outside, right here. And we're just gonna drive it in nice and flush. You got the hammer, the martillo, right? Okay, let's go. Oh, uh, let's get uh, that blue paper towel. I'm gonna clean the surface. Actually, the surface is already clean. Did you do that while I was yeah. That's, I knew you were doing something good. All right, so I'm gonna get it started. It's good, it's good. Eyeing it up. So, no lube? Hold it, yeah, no, no lube. I don't really like to do the lube because we kind of want the friction where we want the friction. And then, uh, we're pretty, we're started right there. So I was trying to get it so the little ears would be on the side, but you know what? It's in the crankshaft and the crankshaft spins, so it doesn't matter. Okay, so I'm gonna do this by eye right here. Okay, Going nice and straight. Yeah, like Obviously heard it bottom out. We're there. That's it, that's bottom out. That's it, dude. You heard, you heard the change? Yeah. Because this flange hit the crankshaft, you're done. We can keep beating on it if you want. It doesn't mean I hope nothing. You're done. Uh, okay, so that's that part. Now somebody's gonna get on cleaning that RTV up and we're gonna start getting that flywheel on. And the rest of us, we're going to move back to the rear axle and get this thing rolling. Alex, unless you want to give up your car. <laughs> All right, pause that. Yeah. All right, so we got our seal driver just a hair smaller than the seal. That way the driver doesn't get stuck in the housing. We got our housing cleaned up. We're going to have that one more wipe. Adrian, you're up. And then uh, what we did, we pre-lubed the lip uh, of the seal, clean up the axle slide the axle in. So what we didn't get was how to get the axles out. So I'm gonna just run you through the process. These C-clips hold the axles. So there's two. You know, pull, you're gonna, oh yeah, okay, so it's all the way in. Good, let me borrow that. So you're gonna take the cover off. You're gonna have the gasket prep and clean it. There's gonna be an eight millimeter bolt in there, small. That bolt holds in the pin. You know, take the eight millimeter bolt out, slide the pin out. When the pin's out, like for the left, left axle, you'll shove the axle in. That'll have the clip pop out. So this clip right here is not retained. Um, who's that, Juan? Can you pull that axle outward? You that axle? Did you see the clip? Yeah, but I'm going to have him pull it to seat it. Okay, boom. So that just seated it. Now go ahead and push it in. That would expose it and then we pop that clip out. That spring right there is a preload spring for limited slip diff. Go ahead and pull the axle back out. Okay, we're gonna leave the axle pulled out. So once we get this one in, we're gonna slide that other axle in. We'll show you that. But right now we're gonna drive the seal. I'm gonna borrow this light. This is Liam's light. <laughs> All right, you ready, to do the, you ready to do the deal, dude? Come on, let's do the deal, man. Come on, man. Get it on. Get it on. Nice and straight. No pressure. You're, you're live, baby. Good. Hold up right there. Let's take a look. Looks like we got to seat that side a little. So you can just spe specifically hit that side of the driver. Okay, hold up, hold up, hold up. A tiny bit on that on that little corner, and then we're just gonna get it flush. It feels like right here. Run your hand on it, run your finger. 
See, it's like flush all the way around except that one corner. Right Matter of fact, you could even just tap it with the hammer, but real lightly. I was gonna already see it damaging. Yeah, okay, then you can use a seal driver. But only hit where we need it. Oh, you know, we <laughs> oh, you don't more. think so? A little bit more? Yeah. No, man, it feels like you're good. I, think you're, I think you're there. We put it in more over there because it was more than there before. Okay, if you know where it was sitting to, we can go that far. A little bit more is okay. Check the level. This one's going in far. You got to get that one straight. Simone. I think a little more there. Yeah. Hold up. No, this side. A little, I think, on the bottom. Bottom? Looked like it to me. Just a little, though. Wait, right there. That should be good. Yeah, it does. It looks like it's even all the way. All right, that's our winner. Now, you got the axe all clean, ready to go? Yep. So we could take a little oh, bit of grease, or we could use some, <coughs> uh, <coughs> some <coughs> other. <laughs> so that way we're not gonna roll the seal over. Okay, we're gonna, we're gonna go for it. Go for it, go for it, go for it. Nice and gentle. You gotta make a whistle when that goes in. Then we're gonna check it out right here. You may bring it in a little mus. Okay, you're set in. Hey, who wants to grab that C clip out of the there you go? There you go. Pull it back. Okay, who's got the pin? Uh, don't do it like that. We want to actually that one held good, but leave it right there. No, I know, but sometimes it'll roll the pinion gears out of place. Mm -hmm. I think this, the preload spring was holding it pretty good, so we're good. No, that one we're going to keep pulled because we're going to try to seat it. So just keep it pulled. We're good. And that's that bolt. We're gonna put some Loctite on that bolt. So just do the pin for now. The pin falls out without the bolt. Like um, the hold the pin. Somebody, you know where my toolbox is? One of the left drawers, it's got Loctite in there. The left small drawers. Whatever Loctite I got is what it's getting. It's maybe like second drawer from the top. And then just the bolt goes in. Yeah, so just gonna hold it for right now. Um, do you have the bolt on you? Yeah. Okay, somebody's job is gonna be clean this bolt. Get it so there's no grease on the, no oil on the threads. We got probably brake clean right here. And you can start the bolt, but then we'll put Loctite on while it's like hanging in there. And then we're gonna leave this housing exposed because we're gonna do the pinion. The pinion. All right, everybody's having good language over there, right? I thought so. So now we can get that bolt in there, but we're not gonna thread it in until we can squirt a little Loctite on the threads. We're ready, Juan, just bring it on here. Angel, you can do it with your other hand, right? What? Put the bolt in? Oh, yeah. Juan, pass it, we're ready. Yeah, the light doesn't really help. Yeah, it helps a little. Yep, just move the move the big pinion pin. No, it's hitting on this. Oh, so we gotta That's get a little, turned a, a little. A certain angle. We gotta get turned a little more or a little less. Just be careful turn it by that. If if possible, it's better to turn it by the pinion, but it's alright. Okay. Okay, stop right there. Okay, so we're just gonna get Loctite on the threads of that bolt. Man, it's tough to get it to focus though. There we go. So Paul. Just blob it right on the, just a little blob on the threads. There will be a little bit in there, maybe. Take some of that and just push it up in there. Or even if it got some, it got it. We're good. It's on there. Go ahead. Run it down. I can see the green right on the threads. Break line. In the meantime, we're going to hook up this concentric slave cylinder with release bearing. All right. You said break it. Don't no break it. <laughs> you dirty dude. All right, so we're snugging up that bolt. All you can do is open end. It's tight fit. I might be able to get a little socket in there. Yeah. 
Yeah, I gotta put it in for it to Okay. So that way it'll not catch. Yeah, you're close. You're close. You're real close. Um, if that pin, if that bolt lo loosens up and that pin drops out, it blows the diff up. Don't ask me how I know. You crazy dudes. Yeah, we got some right here. Okay, and then I can grab the pinion. Snug it more. Snug it? Yep. That's good. You got it, yeah. Okay. So you guys are going to do that, and we're going to come back to it. Well, it's obviously there's no shortage of labor, but shoot, it's a manual transmission and drive line class. I had to go get some stuff set up to do that uh, rear axle pinion seal. That one's going to be a little trickier. Go. All right, so I'm going to use this uh, torque wrench to... Oh, this torque wrench is broken. We're going to get a different torque wrench that works. We have one in our box. Right? Yeah, bring it. Bring it. Please hold. Torque wrench. This torque wrench is not to break the nut loose. This is to measure the rotating torque. So this is just basically going to measure how much effort it takes to rotate. The more I twist it, you know, the more it's going to take. So the reason for that... Can this transition get moved? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The reason we need to do this, and I can't get a full swing because the exhaust's in the way, we're just going to get a baseline at how hard it is. I was showing about 15 right there. If you look right here, by the time I get it moving, I'm going to average about zero there. Well, I'm actually making it, I'm basically making it to, fifth, this thing maxes out actually at 15, so I'm actually going more towards like 20. So I got about 20 inch pounds of rotating force. That's measuring the, the preload of the total differential. It gives me my baseline. The reason I'm gonna do that is because this nut right here, when I take that nut off, and pull this flange off and pull the seal and drive the new seal and put the flange back on, I actually have to tighten that nut to a specified amount. So I'm gonna tighten it to spec um, and then it's actually staked. If you look right here, it's really hard to see, but there's a, there's a mark. Pick trade. So hard to see, but there's a mark on the pinion and a mark on the nut. And if you notice, they're lined up. We're gonna to try to get it lined right up to that spot and then I'm gonna eke it forward a tiny amount because what happens when you undo this and you set this back up, it's gonna go up against a crush washer, a crush sleeve inside the diff and if you don't get it to full torque, that'll loosen up and this diff will blow up. So I'm gonna get it basically set and then a tiny bit tighter which will probably increase us to maybe like 22 inch pounds total and that's gonna be fine. If you don't have that rotating torque wrench, just go ahead and make those marks and then line it back up to those marks. That's the flat rate way to do this job. So I'm just gonna break this loose, not using that little torque wrench. I'm gonna go get a big, I might pop it off with an impact gun, but I ain't gonna show you that. Ready? All right, so we're just gonna pop this off here. I'm holding the, I'm holding the pinion flange. So, that nuts the steak one. I'm gonna set it down here in the mess. Next step, pull this use flange. Yeah, you can tell it wasn't hard to pull. I'm just gonna set this right now. It'd be nice to line it up where it came from, but it's not that huge of a thing. Here's our seal. You'll notice now our pinion's loose because we don't have the um, yoke and stuff on. Hey, wait, shut up. Who's got the, the gear, the seal puller? If you want to be able to watch this video later, don't talk over me. Is it? You no, know, the uh, hook one. The one that looks like you climb an iceberg with. Is it? The ice pick. Does that look like you could climb an iceberg? The ice pick. Is it the one that's broken? Blue box. <laughs> it's the, uh, it's the, it's... All right, looks like we, are, we got a match here. You gonna hold it? There you go. Okay, next, again, with, with any of these seal pullers, we want to catch the seal and not gouge the housing. Don't ask me how I know what happens when you make that mistake. OK. 
Okay, we got about half there. They actually make one of these that you can pull a pin and adjust. That's what I have at home. This one I can't do that, so I'm gonna keep going like this. I'd have those guys stop working, but we need to keep this rolling. Oh, this is one, one day job. This one's obviously had one change. You can see it's been dinged with a hammer a few times. Some freaking dirty ding dongs. Dirty one. Dirk, you know what Martillo is? Hammer. You see one? Anybody see a hammer? All right, so we're gonna clean it. All right, so by the book, what we are supposed to do right now, matter of fact, look right there. You see that gouge? I don't know if you can see that. There's a little gouge right there from the previous let me get it a little different angle. It's actually a little score in the housing. You know what we're gonna do? We're gonna put a little bit of that black RTV on there. Uh, okay, brake clean and black RTV. Black RTV? We trade. It's still taping. And then brake clean. Brake cleaning. I got them. Behind you. All right, so um, this is pretty common. You can tell whoever did the work on this car before was kind of sloppy. Sloppy tech, sloppy tech. All right, so we'll focus in on that. Okay, and that's only because we're gonna do the RTV. We really can't have any oil or you know it's not gonna seal right off the bat. So once we get the seal in there, then we'll take a break. It seems like that was the only gouge, so it's not so terrible. I'm not gonna make a big thing of it. I'm just gonna go with wipe it into the groove. And maybe one more little wipe. Wipe it into the groove. One more little wipe. Okay, so I for sure have got that groove filled. And I'm just gonna run my finger because I can't see the bottom real well. That was the only one. You know that one wasn't me because I didn't even have the puller face in that way. But sure, I'll take the blame if you want, no problem. It was me. And, okay, this one you can use a driver, but I prefer to tap these in in a circle. So while I was saying, when we pull this nut off, we're actually supposed to take the differential all apart and we're supposed to replace that one time use crush sleeve. However, that's a big job. This is a pretty small job. So we're not gonna make a small job into a big job, but that's why this job would actually pay a lot of hours. Now also, what I've seen in the past is they may call for some uh, sealant actually on the splines of this angel sh check down here in those splines they'll sometimes call for some sealant uh, sometimes they'll call for it to be like a ptfe teflon or something like this. Uh, but i don't think this one does however we're gonna we're gonna show it some love a little especially because this seal wasn't leaking where it would normally leak down here it was leaking into this yoke it was companion flange so i'm definitely gonna seal those splines up and I'm cleaning the surface and our surface looks good so I don't see any defects on this like I said, because I want to hook it up get this a little cleaner a little cleaner this thing had some goopy goop in there some yucky schmucky one more brand new one Okay, wipe my finger, hook this baby up real quick. Just a real light coating. This is going to prevent the oil from wicking through the splines. Um, and, and probably it doesn't call for it, but some do. And it's for this exact reason. So today it's what we do. Okay, good there. He's getting the freaking hookup. You bring these Fords over here, you're gonna get made fun of. Okay, ready? We're going back in. Lights. Um, thing. I'm just so I don't roll the seal. I'm gonna work this in and slide. Okay. The nut. The nut's more than likely one-time use. How many times can you count to one? More than once. So we're using it. Well, I'll do my freaking clutch. Main, rear main seal, throwout bearing with slave cylinder, pilot bearing, 
flywheel, two axle seals, freaking companion fly seal, the freaking pinion seal, reseal the cover. Oh yeah, we'll do all that stuff today. Sure, you got it, kid. Now watch my next steps carefully. Uh, Dirk, can you grab a half inch torque wrench? And somebody else, can you pull specs? I'm gonna waste their time. See, this is still loose. I'm, I'm really just taking the looseness out of it before I start wasting my time with the torque wrench. What are you banging on back there, little dudes? Okay, that's as much as I'm gonna go with the gun. Big old torque wrench, where it be? Bring it on over here. Why, you don't like it? You gonna have to come back there and do the work? All right, so this is where this is gonna get tricky. We need to have a way to hold this. The way we're gonna hold it, it's gonna have to be a little janky. Who took the drive shaft out? Oh, those bolts, see those bolts, Liam? Grab two. And we might need a pry bar. We definitely need a big pry bar. Pry bar, I have one of that. All right, so this is this right here is actually really critical. Um, you can look up the spec. An for SST for holding torque. it too, but. And the torque spec. Oh, these are too big. I don't know what these are. Uh, the. What I'm really trying to do here is just be able to support it with a pry bar, which is going to be. Yeah, that one might be enough. And we should look up the spec. But the thing is, you understand what I'm trying to do? I'm trying to go to the same mark. And then I go a little bit more. So that's what I'm gonna do. If you over tighten this, you over crush the crush sleeve and you're screwed. If you under tighten it, it loosens up and you're screwed. <laughs> that's your lesson today. Crap. All right, so I'm just doing this by feel. That was, I don't know, 55. It's definitely gonna call for more 55. Dirk, let me know if you get a spec. Although, it's actually pretty darn close right there. So actually, that's pretty much what it called for. Or that's pretty much lined up to the line. I'm looking. And... Yeah. Right there. Let me take that for a second. So, um, you can see, maybe, the line. I went just a hair further than the line. So I think this is going to be good. What we're going to do now, we're going to change this torque wrench back over to the uh, small inch-pound torque wrench. We're going to measure our total preload. And then what I'm having Dirk do is confirm that this companion flange is maybe 55 foot-pounds or so. Which is pretty low, but we'll see. It's also a lock nut. Okay, please hold. Yep. Yep. All right, so... Yeah, this is just a little higher than it was, which is fine. See, if you notice, it's a little past this 15, and that's all right. We're good at that. You, once you, wherever you tighten it to, you just can't loosen it up. And see, now that I've been turning a little bit, we're right around 15 where we were. You can't, you can't tighten that and then loosen it because you would have crushed the crush wash, the crush sleeve and then backed it off and it would have left a looseness. And that looseness over time will cause this nut to loosen up. When that nut loosens up, it starts to rock the whole pinion and it'll nuke the bearings. This thing will be shot. So actually we're good right there. And as measured by our, uh, our rotating torque. So that is exactly what I would do flat rate. Okay. Angel, you're gonna clean all this oil up. Make sure there's no oil, no oil. Put the FIPG on. No oil one more time and then pop, get it on there. All right, next problem. These little dowels go into the flywheel and uh, they're pretty hard to drive in. So I'm thinking, and this isn't really a particularly specific video, it's, it's how to do a whole bunch of stuff. I'm thinking I got these pre-taped with electrical tape. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna grab the dowel with these and try to drive the dowel in. See what's up with that right now. Straight. Don't even touch it, bro. Don't touch it. It's coming this stuff, huh? Back. Touch it? Ooh, that makes a lot of noise. That's a pain in the butt. 
You better have nice language for my YouTube. If it ain't rated G, it ain't for me. Woo! What? That's not what I, I that's not G. It's like, I don't even remember what G stands for. Kids of all ages. Looks like you gotta go a little more. It's pretty close. You may look in. Yeah, yeah. Alright, yeah. let me trade with you. Jerry's got it. Jerry's on the Dow. Let's see what's happening over here. Alright, that's good. Now, look up specs. Where's it called to grease? I'm sure it's going to have us grease the splines. Mm -hmm. It might even have us grease this sleeve. See that sleeve? Yeah. That's a real, that's a friction point. So I bet it's going to call for grease there, grease there, grease here. There is no pivot because the slave is concentric. And then we'll just clean this up. By then, thank you. We'll be ready for the clutch disc, the centering tool, and then the clutch cover, the pressure plate. And this, somebody's got to clean this mess. Right here. Okay. Righty tighty became righty Lucy. Because I made up 20, 20 foot pounds torque spec, and it probably should have been more like 12. <laughs> um, so we just drilled that. I'm going to tap it. I'm gonna helicoil it, but in the meantime, it's an M6 by 1.0. In the meantime, though, let's see what's happening with the diff. You're hired. Angel, you act like you're all ready. Start doing the layout on there, and then you know what? You can do the layout either on the cover or on the on the diff. Make sure you go around each hole though. Yeah. Go like under. Yeah. Go around. I go around. Go around. Both. And then uh, once you get started, Jessica's gonna pause, and then you're gonna continue. And she's gonna continue along with you. Great cleaning. Great cleaning. Just clean it one more time. Adrian, you help me? I'm gonna put the pivot and then put it on and then you start putting the bolts on. So I'll hold it. That way, that way. I'm gonna put this first. What? I, I can't hear both times. <laughs> I'm gonna put the FIPG first. And I'm gonna put it on and hold it. You're gonna get the bolts and put them in. Alright, you're gonna hold it. You're gonna have to hold it. Alright. Hey, got nice language, huh? That's a good I do like little waves right there, dude. Oh, yeah. Uh, I mean, no. You know what? I'd actually have I wouldn't. Get this tapped. Wish I had a nice tap socket, but we'll get her done. The aluminum cuts so easy. That with the oh yeah, yeah. We got we got the right. coils for that. We're all good. Right. We're gonna make it happen. This transmission will be back in here in like a half hour. They said we're gonna actually be on time. Yeah, that's okay. We close the school at ten o'clock, so. Yeah, that's true. I've been here later than that. Once or twice. Okay. So all I'm really doing is running the tap in, running the tap out. Oh yeah. I'm, don't tell them that. I'll be here all day. We definitely don't. When it's dark, you gotta go home. All right, so um, I got this one tapped. We have to. There's definitely not lights right here. And then um, go ahead and pause. I'll set up the helicon. Ready? I don't wait. I don't wait. Tight. Oh, shit. Can you see the holes down there? Oh. 
You have an alternate, right? You have an alternate. Hopefully. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's the one you got the ones over there? Alternate. So the bolt won't make. No. Shorty. Okay. I really hope it's just you. Uh, no, we're gonna have to do it. Oh, I can see it's it. Back of Adrian's head. Doesn't it? Doesn't it? Doesn't it? Yep. Oh, yeah. Actually, we don't have that next week, so. Okay, we go. Oh, it's confusing. Is that good? I thought so. Let's go. It's like an Izzetti co uh, competitor. Hey, how much did it work to? Thirty-three. All right, so with this clutch going in, it's aftermarket, and we've got this one bolt hole. Hey, dude, it looks pretty close to centered now. Just try the bolt with the other bolts loose. That bolt hole wouldn't quite line up, but it does look pretty close from this angle. If you can get them started with it loose, it'll be cool. If not, we're gonna be pulling it. We're gonna file the, the hole a little. Still same? Then make sure we torque these down in the crisscross. Yeah, because it's on C. It's on tight. Mm. Let's just take a look. It does look like. Um, it seems like it might be a little bit off. Definitely feels like it does. Uh, let's check that out a little bit. All right, we cleaned up a little hole. Is it a flat cleanup? Jerry, you're up. You stab the clutch. I'll hold onto it, and then uh, you grab the pressure plate. Go for it. No touchy the friction. Okay, it's landed on the dowels. We'll finger start every bolt. Turn a little more. I think you're kind of on there. I'll hold it. Finger start every bolt. Oh, you want to you want to take it back there? So your heel coils in, right? Yeah. Did you already get the bolt in? Not yet. But if it's sweet, so the heel closed in there. I should have got you doing that. But we're moving on. Oh well. Oh well. What's going on in the rear axle now? I'm just gonna fill it up. Put the brakes together. Gonna top it off. Man, if you ain't done by five, you're gonna have to ride your bicycle and your skateboard or your scooter board or whatever home. No, we're good. We're good. All right, so we got. Thank you. It, that's that's bless plenty good. <laughs> all right, so got all of them started. Man, this freaking gun with no ring on it. Dang. Major I one. can't imagine. Yeah, yeah where's no. the no? gun? So all I'm doing is just oh, tightening this down in a nice crisscross. Right? Yep. Yeah, that's it. You want to fill it up? Alternating uh, bolts. What? What do you want? What? What? The FIPG? No, yeah. Are all your brakes put together? Um, it'd probably be alright, but if you got to do brakes, do the brakes first. On the springs down. Yes, it must have. <laughs> okay, uh, Alex, confirm torque specs, and then. The pressure plate. Yep. I got. Told me twenty. How much? Twenty six. Twenty six. Yeah, that makes sense. Jerry, you want to go do the honors? Yeah. Twenty six crisscross pattern. Here is torque wrench. You still torquing that sucker? <laughs> I need an extension. Snug is snug, partner. Alright, so this one gave us a little trouble before. 
so I'm just snugging it up. Uh, it's in my hand, actually. You need it. So, I'm just snugging those up. Okay, this one's ready. I'm gonna do crisscross on there. Mark it. Yeah, it's really this. It's really the. It's really just the concept. You know, you just generally want to do a crisscross. Yeah, and that does make sense. Then you know which ones you hit. All right, anticipate that one because you're getting close. Oh, come on. One more. Good. 26.0. Perfect. And then it's kind of like a wheel. If you want to go around in a circle and just check and confirm them, that's okay. But just generally drawing them down, yeah. we'll do about a crisscross. Star pattern-ish. It's like a Star of David. In this case, there's six points. Not like the Carl's Jr. star. Bingo. Right, so you get the idea here. Once he gets the torque down, then we can pull the special oh, tool out the middle. Yeah, man, you are, you, you, are, you are famous. I am just talking to you. But my phone is watching you, too. What's up, guys? Hey, hi. Alex Fix here. Jerry Fix there. Snickerdoodle Fix here. Bingo, six are there. If you want to go around a circle, you can, but I know you got them, so it's yeah. all up to you. What the hell? This is a 19. Oh, no. That's a 21. Close? Let me get a different sock. What the? You better have good language. What the what? So it's just not a bad idea to double check it. Because as you were seating the spring, you know, it can change a little. Yeah, you no, know, these ones are loose too. Huh? Oh, it's okay. Yeah, all attention, huh? yeah, you're closing it up. So you might over it. Now you nailed that one on the money. You got lucky. Yeah, I got lucky. Yes, you did. But by the time you get to the last ones, they'll probably take less. Yeah. You might even check them again. Here. Bingo. Yeah. yeah, you can feel the difference now. Yeah. So what are you going to do with this clutch? Some big burnouts or what? Maybe in the rain. Oh, why? Because the tires are cheaper? Yeah. <laughs> Got that one. Yeah, go there. Close. Close. See? There we go. All right, check, your, check your first ones again. Should I do them all again then? It doesn't again. hurt. All it's costing you is time and batteries. Now you know that you got them good so we can pull this. Because now the disc is held and you can see it's perfectly center. So by the time we lube up these splines, the whole purpose is to have that clutch center so that when we slide this transmission in its center and all the bell housing bolts will be lined up, the dowels will keep the transmission center line with the crankshaft. So we're close. Okay. Special lube. We don't want to overdo it. A little lube goes a long way. Same with this. A little lube goes a long way. 
work it. And then on this spot, it's a little tougher to get, but I'm going to push your slave cylinder back. I'm going to hit this sleeve a little. I'm going to work it. That would be a creek right there if we didn't lube it. Um, these splines actually wouldn't uh, probably cause a whole lot of noise, but it's going to make the clutch engagement feel kind of funny because the disc will get snagged on the lines. This was really unnecessary because you got a full-on roller bearing rather than a pilot bushing. But it's all good. We're ready now. There's no clutch pivot. It's got the concentric slave and release cylinder all together. So you're ready. This transition's ready to roll back in. Oh, let's go. Amigo. Look at these gravy dogs. Got a nice LED light. Made yourself a nice home under here. What's up with the zip ties? Oh, uh, just zip tying the muffler up. The transition's back in. Hooking it up. Still got some stuff to do. You guys got to bleed this clutch. It's going to take you a while. Get somebody in there, start pumping, crack the bleeder loose. Just like how you bleed brakes. Just how you bleed brakes, same type of way. Uh, I think there's gonna be a bleeder screw. Sure there's no bleeder screw? There's gotta be. Where's the connection? All right, well that one, 20 inches of mercury might work. All right, well, I'm glad you pulled the specs. You can't really access that anyway. All right, well, we'll see how the bleeding goes. We'll catch that on video too. But at least it's getting closer. You guys are just milking it though. All right, so the day's not over yet. Just cutting out this foam. And we're gonna poke a hole. Right over here. Uh, grab that vacuum bleeder, bring it right over. I know, I forgot where that was and I couldn't remember and then it was just too late. You are my biggest fan, man. As a matter of fact, here, you take this, we'll trade it. Sure. You may take it, it's still taping. So the foamy, and poke the hole in it. Sure. If we have to, we might even have to cut it. Take this, put this in here. MacGyver style. I'm gonna pop this on the reservoir. Oh. We're gonna go and just pulse it and release it. Pulse it, release it, and uh, make sure the fluid level stays full. You're gonna be looking for air not to come through here. You're gonna be looking through air bubbles through the reservoir. That's how you do it, janky style. Yes. Anthony, your knife. Blade still exposed. All right, I'll take that. You do the work. Okay. Get it on. So I just uh, hold it and then... Yeah, you're gonna you're hold right? it, squeeze the trigger. See if that's back. Because we, you know how this valve has to be turned? Just, yo, yeah, oh, it is. Yeah. See how it's stuck? All right, you're just gonna pulse it, and then you can't really see much in there. Let's just look at the food level. It's up high. Go ahead and pulse it. Do more, longer. And then what we could do, in addition, if somebody could pump by the pedal, Adrian, you take over on the vacuum, and Alex, because it's your car and you're, you're not even clean, man. You're gonna get in your own car all dirty? So this is the makeup uh, special service tool. Get any pedal yet? Keep pulsing it. And then definitely mind his paint, because that brake fluid, you know what it's going to do if it touches. Still nothing? It's starting to come in. All right, so we're going to continue this method. One more? Um, yeah, give it a little pulse. It's about five minutes in. We're pulsing it. We're pumping it. We're doing a workout. And all right, you ready? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull it. You hear the vacuum? Yeah. Alright, how's the pedal? I think it's I think it's there. Alright, well just for good measure we'll do it one more time. Alright. Pump up vacuum. Uh -huh. Alright, that's good, and then you just keep on pumping up the jam. So you're probably pretty good. Somebody should get some uh mostly water and a little tiny bit of degreaser and wipe off any of the prints in case there's any brake fluid on there. So I'm gonna wash it yeah, but I'd wipe it off oh, really? like now. Oh, okay. If that's brake fluid, it's you're gonna exactly. be you ain't gonna have paint on that fender. I don't think it is, I think it's oil. Oily from your oily, nasty skin, but go ahead and take care of it. 
We of course need to put this on. American muscle. American muscle. Okay, I'm not doing that job. My job is to yell at you and give you a hard time. Somebody's making that happen. All right, let's uh, good wipe down. Let's let's release this. And then, how's your pedal? Okay, let's get rid of that. I'm gonna hook that all up, clean some stuff up. Who's putting on that strut tower brace? The owner? Okay. Look at this guy. Well, how's it feel, DK? My goodness. All right, final moments. Eh, it's still not that bad. It's not even six o'clock yet. We're doing all right. Hey, why is it so loud? What happened to the exhaust donuts? What happened to the donuts? <laughs> oh, you ding dongs don't know how to put exhaust together or what? None of them were in. None of them were in, dude. Oh, my God. Yeah. 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 Hammer, hammer, hammer. I'll make a special tool here. Hammer, hammer. That's pretty good. Yep. Buzz it up a little better. All right, now that we got the exhaust fixed, just gonna take it on its mage here. Everything come out all right? Very good. You wanna drop the hood for him? He's gotta do his test here. I'll put away our, the O2 sensor was out of it. Oh, I have this back too. <laughs> oh, you guys, this this crap you get into in just one day. Feel it. Become one with the clutch. Yeah, you got a clutch now. Well, your old clutch was shot, duh. Low. Yeah, it's low because the disc is thick. That's how it's supposed to be when it's new. This is old crap. Look at these turkeys like pigeons on a thing. Oh, what happened? Almost stalled it, huh? What do you need? Driving lessons or what? It was shot. Totally just junk. Amiga, what's the hold up? There you go.